all you do is substitute the blog number to have a user-friendly link to get you right there. All I want to mention from review of the past two sessions is my system for arrhythmia interpretation. I still find after decades of looking at cardiac rhythms that unless I'm systematic, I miss things. Watch your P's and Q's and the three R's. Remind you of the five parameters you want to use for any arrhythmia, fast rhythms, slow rhythms. So looking for P waves or atrial activity, is the QRS wide or is it narrow? And the three R's being the rate of the rhythm, this is both the atrial and ventricular rhythm, the regularity, and if there are P waves, are they related to the QRS complex? Does not, does not matter in what sequence you ask yourself these questions, as long as you always assess all five of these parameters. For the AV blocks that I'm covering today, I like the KISS method. The KISS method, basically keep it simple. There are three degrees of AV block. There's the first degree, and that's easy to diagnose because all you do is see that there's a sinus rhythm with a long PR interval. For the third degree, that's also easy. And this is what most people don't realize. The reason third degree or complete AV block, those are synonyms. The reason that's easy to diagnose is that most of the time, not 100%, but most of the time, the escape rhythm, wherever it comes from, the junction or the ventricles, will be regular. So KISS method for the three degrees of AV block, if I have an AV block and it's not first degree, and it's not third degree, what degree is it? It's second degree. And as we talked about last time, there are three types of second degree AV block. There is MOBITS type one, MOBITS type two, and then sometimes you have two to one conduction, which means it could be either MOBITS one or MOBITS two. This is the case. It's ECG blog number 191. This two lead rhythm strip was obtained from an older woman who presented to the emergency department after syncope. Is the rhythm complete AV block? Watch your P's and Q's and the three R's. So looking for P waves or atrial activity, is the QRS wide or is it narrow? And the three R's being the rate of the rhythm, the regularity, and if there are P waves, are they related to the QRS complex? Isn't it much easier to look at this once I've labeled the P waves? Why did I use this pink arrow? And the answer is because it's hidden within the QRS. Am I a thousand percent sure that there's a P wave in here? No. Why? Because the QRS is covering it. But this is an important concept. So with difficult rhythms, and this is a challenging rhythm, I always divide the rhythm into easier parts and more difficult parts. And I like to start with the easier parts. The easier parts are, let's see if there's an underlying rhythm. The easier parts deal with watch your P's, Q's, 3 R's. Is the ventricular rhythm regular? What do you think? To the P's, Q's, 3 R's, we have answered the question that yes, there are P waves that are pretty regular, and the QRS is regular and the QRS is wide, and what is the rate? The ventricular rhythm is one, two, three, four, five, six, a little bit more than six large boxes, 300 by six, so the rate is 50, a little bit less than 50 per minute. What is the last component 
of the piece cues three R's. We didn't do the last R, which is related. Our P waves that we see, are they related to the QRS complex? How do you tell? And the way that you tell, the easiest way for me, I look in front of each QRS and I look for a P wave and tell me if the PR interval is the same. Here it's longer. And here it's longer. Here this is really short. And here there's a P wave. It's right on top of the QRS. So how many think there is no relation of P waves to the QRS? Now, how do we define complete AV block? The easiest way to tell if the P wave might be related to the QRS is whether you have any repetitive PR intervals. Do you have PR intervals that are seen that are identical PR intervals that occur more than once? And we don't. P waves, they're marching through at a regular rate through the QRS complex with no relation. So third degree AV block, regular atrial rhythm, or fairly regular atrial rhythm if there's underlying sinus arrhythmia, regular ventricular rhythm, and there's no relation to them. There is one last part of the definition of complete AV block that in my experience, most providers, even experienced ones, forget. In order to call something complete AV block, you need to have P waves occur at all phases of the cycle, the R-R interval, that have a chance to conduct but still fail to do so. What do I mean by this? Well, if you look at all of these P waves, most of them occur either in the middle of the R-R interval or close to the QRS complex, but I don't have a lot of P waves occurring there, there, there. This P wave right in front of beat number four, there's no way that can conduct. It's way too short to conduct. So let me prove this with the last part of this tracing. Here are the last couple of beats, and I'm going to give you a couple of moments to look at this rhythm strip. Look in particular at the last couple of beats. Now, what happens both to the QRS complex and the question of a relation between P waves and the QRS for the last part of this tracing? How many think this is still complete AV block? How many think this is now definitely not complete AV block? Tell me about the P waves. Don't they continue regular? or almost regular throughout the entire tracing. What has happened to the QRS complex? What has happened to the QRS complex? Now look in front of each QRS complex for these last four beats. What do you see? Do you see P waves? Is the PR interval constant? Are these last four beats conducting? You should be able to appreciate that the PR interval is constant, which tells you what? These last four beats are conducting. But is every P wave conducting? How many P waves are conducting? We see this better at the latogram. Beat number seven has a constant PR interval, the same PR interval as all of these beats, so it's conducting. All of the P waves in today's tracing go through the atria because we see the P wave, they get through the atria. So you see a pretty regular, pretty vertical line through the atrial tear. That's because conduction is pretty fast through the atrium. Beat number seven is sinus conducted. Once you get from the SA node to the AV node, conduction slows down. That's why there's a little angle here. This is the amount of time it takes to write the PR interval. And then once you get into the ventricular conduction system, because it's a narrow QRS, 
conduction is fast again. This is a conducted beat. What happens to this P wave? It gets blocked. It doesn't get through the AV node. Every other P wave, starting with beat number six, conducts. So we have what's known as a two to one AV block. What degree is it? Is it first degree? No, because I don't have every P wave conducting. Is it third degree? No, because we have some P waves that are conducting. Therefore, by KISS, the KISS method, this is a type of second degree block. And this is the special type of second degree AV block because there is two to one conduction. What happens with Wenke-Bach is the PR interval progressively increases until you drop a beat. The problem is if I only conduct one beat and then I drop it, one beat and then I conduct, is I never know if I'm conducting. P waves don't have a chance to increase the PR interval, which is why when you have a two to one block, we cannot be sure which type we have, but we do have a second degree AV block. Now, what is the latogram showing in this part? Where are the impulses beginning? Well, they're beginning from the ventricles. These are ventricular beats. They conduct backwards and they prevent conduction of these impulses down to the ventricles. I need to get to the difference between AV dissociation and complete AV block. AV dissociation is not the same as complete AV block. There are three types of AV dissociation. This is a schematic illustration of what? We have a regular ventricular rhythm. We have regular P waves. The rate is slow. Ventricular rate is a little over 30. Do these P waves conduct? So we look in front of each QRS. PR interval continuously changes. This is complete AV block. Do these P waves have a chance to conduct? Yes, because they pretty much occur everywhere and they fail to conduct. Now, where is the escape focus? Well, the QRS is wide, so it comes from the ventricles. As opposed to this example of complete AV block, none of these P waves have a chance to conduct. But the QRS is narrow, so where is the escape? It's probably at the AV node. Look at this rhythm. Is there AV block? If so, what degree of AV block is present? Is my patient stable? I'm going to say yes, the patient's stable. The patient's not stable. You might have to do something before you figure out the rhythm. Since the patient's stable, Watch my P's and Q's and three R's. What can we say? Regularity of the ventricular rhythm, even without calipers, what do you think? Pretty regular. Is the QRS wide or narrow? Pretty narrow, isn't it? Are there P waves? Red arrows is the hint. Yes, there are P waves. And yes, the atrial rhythm looks pretty regular. But are these P waves, the third R, are these P waves conducting? Now, if I just looked at this P wave in front of beat number one, I would not know if this P wave is conducting or not. It's a reasonable PR interval, probably a little bit less than 0.2. So I would not know. But what about this P wave and this P wave? There is no way that these P waves are conducting. So this defines AV dissociation. Is this complete AV block? Whether any of the P waves on this tracing have a reasonable chance to conduct and still fail to do so. And none of them do because the PR interval is short. I don't have any P waves occurring here or here or here.
this is AV dissociation, and I have no idea if there is any degree of AV block. There are three types of AV dissociation. There's what's known as AV dissociation by default, by usurpation, and by AV block. What do I mean by that? There is default. Because the sinus pacemaker, the SA node, slows down, the AV node may take over. This was a healthy individual who basically was put under anesthesia, which often slows the rate. And look at the rate of the AV node. It's about 55. The sinus rate is about 50. So this is default. What happened was there was sinus bradycardia, so a normal AV nodal escape pacemaker took over. This is AV dissociation by default. And if you only showed me this rhythm without telling me the history, I would say, I have no idea if there's heart block, but there is no evidence of any AV block. Now, the second type of AV dissociation is usurpation. What do I mean by that? I mean that one of the other escape pacemakers, either the AV node or the ventricles, accelerates to faster than the sinus rate. Since the QRS is narrow here, this is the AV node. And I will say it's pretty uncommon to see an accelerated junctional rhythm. You may see it with acute infarction, after surgery, open heart surgery, shocky patients, but it's not that common. But what happened here is none of these P waves really have a chance to conduct because the AV node took over. So this is AV dissociation by usurpation, and I have no idea if there's any degree of heart block at all. What's the difference with this last example? Regular P wave rhythm right? Red arrows. Regular QRS coming from the ventricles because it's wide. No relation between P waves and QRS complexes. Now, ideally, I would like to see a little longer tracing here. Basically, it looks like none of these beats are conducting. This is complete AV block at the ventricular level. So I'm going to finish with one last look at the laddergram of today's case, none of these P waves in the first five beats conducted, they didn't have adequate chance to, but because there's a little sinus arrhythmia, eventually one of these P waves occurs at a point when it is able to conduct. So what do we have? We have second degree AV block, two to one AV conduction, and we also have some AV dissociation that occurs. Now, when there is conduction, the rate, it's slow, it's about 50, but it's not that slow. Is this likely to be MOBITS-1 or MOBITS-2? Which one's more common? In my experience, MOBITS-1 or AV Winkybach is about 95%, if not more, common than MOBITS-2. MOBITS-2 is rare. With MOBITS-2, the QRS is usually wide. Here it's narrow. You want to recognize MOBITS-2 is because those patients need a pacemaker. It's much less stable. This particular rhythm, I would look at this and I would say, well, there's AV dissociation, but the patient can conduct. It's a second degree block. It's probably MOBITS-1. And at a rate of 50, the patient may or may not be stable. I need clinical correlation for that.